How to code in SQL? Well, in this video, you guys are going to find out. I'm Ben and welcome to Social Genie. We're going to cover the basics of SQL in this video. Why should you learn SQL? Well, SQL is the language of databases. It stands for Structured Query Language and basically it's used to communicate with databases. So if you have a large data set and you need to query that data, you need to insert different fields, you need to find out information from a large data set, then really you need to know SQL. So that's why we're going to be diving into it in this video. So without further ado, let's dive in. Function we're going to go over is called the WHERE clause. Now this is basically used to filter certain records. So it's a bit, it's similar to an if statement if you've looked at other types of code, but we basically the WHERE clause used to filter records. So for example, we could say, if we go back here, select all from listings where we want to say where neighborhood equals fallow field, which is an area in Manchester. It's a student area. So we want to say, okay, what, what are all the student properties on Airbnb in Manchester? So we click that there, we click execute and we see, okay, here we've got all the neighborhoods. We've got all the properties which are listed in Fallowfield. And we can see there's 44 of those properties and that's simply from the where statement. And we could say, okay, now we might wanna know, okay, what's the average price of properties where the neighborhood is Fallowfield? Now this could be a neighborhood in New York, it could be Brooklyn, it could be anywhere. So whatever city you're in, you could do this with the specific Airbnb data. Select, let's say the average price from listings where the neighborhood is Fallowfield. Let's see if that works. Bang. So we can see the neighborhood, 144 pounds per night. So that's less than the average for every neighborhood in Manchester. So we can simply do that by looking at the information. Now, if I type in another neighborhood here, there's one called Shorten, which is quite a, it's quite a nice area. So let's see if it's more expensive. I'm guessing it's gonna be more expensive per night. Oh, actually it's cheaper. That is really surprising. So. 85 pounds per night in Chorlton. Perhaps there's less people who wish to stay in Chorlton or maybe, I don't know, for some reason it seems a lot cheaper. That's quite interesting. Now we can also nest these where statements together, the same as you would in if statements in let's say C programming. So we can say where neighborhood is Fallowfield and, so we simply put an and statement, which will link that and then we can say and the price is let's say less than, let's say our budget is 100 pounds per night or 100 US dollars if you're in the US. So we'll say our price is 100. So we want to link those together. So we want to see listings in the Fallowfield student area, which is where we want to stay. And we execute right there. And then what we see here, guys, is we see all the properties where the price is less than 100. So as you can see here, just going through it, we can see the max it goes up to there is at 96. Um, there's no one charging sort of 99 pounds because that's what it would go up to 99 great British pounds I'm referring to you guys if you if you're in the US So that's quite interesting there So this is all the information that we can find out in just a few minutes by just using these simple um, Statements basically what we can do is we can highlight the properties with the highest number of reviews now It doesn't say this is positive or negative But I'm assuming if they have a large number of reviews then that's usually a good sign because it means a lot of people are actually staying in the property because usually on Airbnb, they are quite strict. So we're gonna say the number of views, let's say greater than 20. So let's say here, and we'll try and run that now. Bang. So we've narrowed down our search. We've selected all the, all the properties from the listings where the neighborhood is Fallowfield. So this could be, let's say, a certain area of Austin, Texas, or wherever you guys are watching this video from. The price per night is less than 100 because that's our budget. And the number of reviews are greater than 20. So according to this, we should contact Darren or any of these people here. We should contact these IDs here because this is the people here. And we should, and they are very, very cost-effective places here. 35 pounds, 45 35, 49, and a high number of reviews. So this one here, 134 reviews, private one bedroom flat, Wi-Fi. Doesn't sound too bad, really. So we could even narrow this down further. So let's say we wanna say, okay, and, and we want to do a long-term rental. So let's say greater than three months, where availability is greater 
the 90. We run that and we should get just two places here. So there we go again. We've got two places where the availability, if you can go here, availability, this one's available for 176 days a year. This one available for the whole year. There we go. So that's how we can use SQL. So it is a very, very powerful programming language. So I'm going to cover three little functions here real quick, guys. So we've got the count, which can be used to count a certain value, which we have in each of the rows. And then the group by to group those together. Now, this will all make sense. So as I've wrote here, select the neighborhood. So that's the neighborhood column. We're going to count the different neighborhoods from the listings table and we're going to group them together by neighborhood. And I've already run that, but I'll run it again for you one more time. And we can see we've got the different neighborhoods here and we've got the different column amounts. So we've got, okay, there's 60 properties in Wally range. There's 96. And what we could use this for is say, okay, where is there a lack of listings? And that might be an area where we want to look at for, let's say, investment purposes. Now, before I get into that, what, what I'm going to cover here is aliases. So an alias is basically just a temporary name we can add to a column, which can be used in order to make it just a bit easier to read. So I can say as, we're going to call it nay number. It's not that great of a name. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, nay number. But it just gives us a little bit more. So we've got the neighborhood. We've got the nay number, which is the number of neighborhoods. And we can see we've got it grouped there. We can say order by. And if we run that again, it should order it for us. So it's ordered it and by default, it orders in ascending. So it starts from the lowest um, to the highest. And we wanted to know where it has the least amount of properties available on Airbnb. And we can see it's a place called Moston here, which I don't think is a very nice area anyway, but I'm not, I'm not really sure 100%. Um, but these are the places that have a low number. Now, let's say th this could have thousands of rows and we want to see the max. So what we can do is we can put descending here, which will flip that around. So bang. And that's flipped that around. So we can see the Sulphur District has 579 Airbnb properties available, which is the highest in Manchester. And the city centre, which of course is the most popular area, um, which is where I currently live, that has 279 properties available on Airbnb. So these are the most competitive areas. Ancoats, that also has a lot of properties. Trafford, that's where the Manchester United Stadium is. So these are the areas which have the most amount of properties available on Airbnb. You guys have discovered all this through using SQL code. So well done to you guys so far. And if you're still with me, feel free to give this video a big thumbs up. That really does help out tremendously with the channel. If you haven't subscribed, feel free to join the family by hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on. A comment below your thoughts. Did you find this useful? Did you find it valuable? Do you want to see more videos like this? And I hope you guys all have an incredible day and I'll see you in our next video.